Please welcome Álvaro Buenaventura Acosta, director, Latin America, Formula E Holdings, and Bloomberg's Nathaniel Bullard. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, everyone. Thank you for having me back up here. Álvaro, good to see you. I'm going to take a seat, and we're going to get started talking about Formula E. You're lucky, you're the first person here so far wearing essentially branded uniform swag, so well done you, and thank you for joining us. Um, I will have to say that I've got a bit of a, a personal take on all of this with Formula E, which is that I had the chance to go eight years ago to the very first race in Beijing, and it was an extraordinary experience. And it's a real treat here to talk about what's been coming next, like what's developed in the eight years since then. So, Alvaro, tell us a bit, It's been eight years since 2014. We're now on the third generation of the car, but tell me what has driven Formula E to success in that time. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Nat. It's good to see you again. I was, I was there yes. in 2014 in that marvelous first race of Formula E in Beijing. <clears throat> so a lot of things have, have happened. It's amazing how this project has grown ever since. Uh, I mean, we, we are the fastest Uh, growing uh, motorsport right now uh, in the world and this is because there have been a, a combination of, of, of things that made this happen, right? First of all have been uh, the governments, uh, you know that we do city racing, uh, so the governments have to be involved and it's amazing how in the, in the, in the eight years that we have been uh, with this project, how on the first year we had to go and, and knock the doors of, of majors, of ministers, of even presidents of, of uh, countries all around the world. And now we, we had to, to, to create a new department, a city development department, because we have more than 100 requests of cities wanting to, to have Formula A on the streets. And that's primarily because that's where the world is right now. So all the public legislation is going towards electric vehicles, Uh, we have new uh, deadlines now to have uh, net zero uh, strategies and, uh, and, and politics going ahead. So this is um, a platform that uh, creates and gives a message uh, to, the, to, the, to the main audience that goes beyond professional summits, right? So we are using a sport to give uh, key messages of sustainability, electromobility, Uh, things that were uh, not on the agenda before and now they are. So uh, the support of the governments have been key on this uh, venture. And, and then the, the brands, the, the, the private sector uh, understood that climate change is no longer uh, uh, fashionable, it's, it's a reality. And, and what was in the past, um, budgets of marketing, of Uh, so called corporate social responsibility. Now, uh, brands and, 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 and industry has uh, realized that there has to be a cause behind the marketing budget, and they have to, to there has to be something beyond of 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 a, a traditional marketing strategy, right? So, both public and private uh, synergies towards uh, Formula E have created the perfect storm uh, for this project to, to develop so fast. And I, I think there's, there's this fantastic example on the sustainability element here that Formula E is 100% net zero, you know, not just offsetting some part of the emissions of the process, but the entire sport is a net zero undertaking. So tell us a bit about that. I mean, you've been doing this now for eight years. Tell us a bit about that. Exactly. That's a very good point, and we are very proud of it. Uh, September 2020, uh, we communicated that we are the first and only motorsport in the world to be completely net zero since season one. So there are three steps on this, on this big achievement. Um, first, we, we, we had to measure which are the, the missions that Formula A are, are producing around the world, uh, because obviously we do, right, as a, as a motorsport and a global championship. Uh, then, We have um, put in place um, a lot of actions to reduce them with technology, with partners, with 
everything that we have in place right now and partnering with the correct brands and with the correct people to reduce it as much as possible. And then whatever is not there still to be offset with the technology that is in place right now in the world, then we offset it with, um, with projects uh, around the world uh, normally in places that we race, because there's a legacy program in Formula E that we do not, not only go race and run away, but we, we like to have legacy projects in each city and each country that we race. So, so we offset the rest, the remaining uh, footprint that was not able to do it uh, with the technology that is uh, right now in place. Yeah, it's good. And tell us a bit, I know you've, you've got quite a lot of um, partnerships and social programs as well. I know you do something with UNICEF. Tell us a bit, uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, yeah. UNICEF has been uh, right now our flagship partner uh, in terms of social uh, projects. So we are doing different um, projects around the world and again in places that we raise or uh, topics that arises uh, throughout the years in Formula E. So we have focused in, in different uh, aspects. Uh, childhood for us and education is key. So we have uh, penetrated in communities that needed this kind of approach and uh, educating uh, childhoods and, and communities that needs uh, this kind of uh, sustainable approach to their communities. And we have been uh, with uh, UNICEF uh, tackling all these uh, challenges and and with very good outcomes so far. Good. Now, we had this nice conversation, but we're talking about racing, right? And you've got the new Gen 3 racer. I got to see Gen 1. I've seen Gen 2 on the road. Gen 3 has just been unveiled in Monaco. You've got to tell us about, tell us about the car. Absolutely. This is an, our new baby. Um, <laughs> you saw Generation 1. Yep. Uh, remember that each driver needed two cars to oh, finish yeah. a 15 right. minute race because the car, the battery of the car uh, only lasted to, for 20 minutes, right? That was generation one that lasted four years. Then we had generation two, uh, that is the one that we're racing right now and is the last season that we managed to give a little bit more power, nearly double the autonomy of the car with very little more weight. And right now we have launched, uh, together with the FIA, uh, three weeks ago in Monaco, the Generation 3, that for us, it's generation, it's, it's like season zero, right? Having this car on the streets, it's uh, for you to, to, to have like a little insight. Generation 1 was 200 kilowatts, Generation 2 was 250 kilowatts, and Generation 3 is 600 kilowatts. So we nearly, uh, we, we, we more than doubled, and we reduced the weight. So now we, we have uh, the most efficient, the most uh, fast, and the lighter car in motorsport, in, in, in the electric motorsport. So right now we can say that we can not only talk about being pioneers and being in the lead of electric motorsport, but we are in the lead of motorsport among all the championships in the world, right? So this, this machine, uh, I mean, it has been developed uh, to race in city centers. So it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more powerful. So I think that in the next four years, uh, we're gonna have uh, a lot of fun seeing these, these cars on the streets. And imagine uh, what will be generation four, that we already uh, have conversations with all the manufacturers, with all the battery suppliers, etc. We already have conversations of what is the next generation, and, and we are already working on it. Well, listen, I can't wait to see generation three on the first race, and I look forward to talking about generation four the next time we see each other. Alvaro, thank you so much for joining us, and audience, thank you for listening. Thank you.